Hi everybody, I want to tell you a quick Zimbardo story. First let me tell you how I've gotten to know him. I tell this story not because I like to name drop and brag about this, uh, but um, as a little sort of m the moral of this story of my knowing Zimbardo is, is this. It's, uh, it's about networking, especially if you're introverted and kind of shy like I often tend to be. So a um, good friend of mine that I've met through Zimbardo is Dr. Rick Sword, and he um, used to say, you know, that cliche, it's not what you know, but who you know that matters. He took it a step further and would add, it's who knows you that matters. So reflect on that. It's, doesn't, it, it's important who knows you that matters, not just who you know. The fact that I know Zimbardo is not what's important to me. It's the fact that he knows me. So this is how he's gotten to know me and vice versa. So it all began uh, back in 2005 when I was at Hawaii Pacific University in Honolulu. I got invited by his book rep um, for one of his uh, intro site textbooks. Um, she called him said he was going to be in town to meet with um, area psychology faculty as he was going to be at the University of Hawaii giving talks. And um, would I like to come to this dinner? And I was like, sure, yeah. So I go and I go with my colleague here, um, Dr. Howard Markowitz, and uh, uh, I do something uncharacteristic for me. And I just sort of, it's time to sit down with about 15, 20 people. I, make, you know, I sit down right across from, from Zimbardo. So here I am face to face with this uh, legendary psychologist. And I'm trying to be cool. You know, I didn't take a camera with me. This is before cell phone, before I had a cell phone camera. And, um, you know, and I was like, no, be cool. You know, don't take your camera. And everybody else is taking pictures of him. So I was like, oh, I wish I had a camera. So I noticed he had one in his pocket. And I was too shy and embarrassed to ask him to take a picture with his camera. Uh, and sent it to me, but um, Howard here was, uh, you know, brave enough to do so. So he asked him, and he agreed. You know, he said sure. And so he took this, had this picture taken on his camera, and he emailed me, emailed it to me that night. So now I got Zimbardo's email. So I hear that he's coming back to Hawaii a few years later, and I contact him and remind him who I am, and um, I asked him if he would come give talks at my university and he says his schedule is pretty booked but I'll I can come and give uh, an informal talk so he did just that I picked him up at the airport and brought him over later in the day to to my school and he gave this informal talk story to faculty and students there and I had dinner with him that night and um, and and and, um, and it's gone like that ever since so he's really gracious uh, with my students uh, when he's in town or wherever I'll you know gather students up and we'll go see him and he always expresses interest in them and he's uh, very kind and gracious like that so each time he comes out to Hawaii you know he would come out to Hawaii or if I was somewhere at a conference where he'd be um, we'd get together like this and um, in, in 2012 he, he came out to the Hawaii Psychological Association and I have a bunch of students with me and here we are at the lunch and Zimbardo was the featured speaker, and um, he took me by surprise by, you know, when he was being introduced, he acknowledged how happy he is to be back in Hawaii to see good friends like Brian Metcalf, and I kind of spit out my soup or whatever, to, you know, in, in sort of shock. Um, so like I said, he'd always, you know, you know meet with my students and, 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 and pose with pictures with them. And this, by the way, is, is Rick and Rose Sword, who I mentioned at the beginning of this. Great, great folks who I've met through Zimbardo also. All right, so um, he invited me along the way to, to um, collaborate with him, and, and, uh, and I've, I've done so, and that's sort of the professional highlight for me. Um, I, I wrote a co-wrote an article with him that appeared in the encyclopedia on his time perspective theory, and uh, co-presented with him at a conference uh, on how we use the heroic imagination project with students. And I talked about how I use it in my courses. And um, 
um, at that same conference, uh, by the way, I uh, attended a workshop, a heroic imagination project workshop, training workshop, all day conference, uh, all day workshop uh, with about 15, 20 people. And afterwards, we posed for this group photo. And um, it turned out that I was standing right next to someone who I did not yet know, who uh, would become a great friend and colleague of mine here at the University of Cincinnati, Dr. Marlo Davis. So one year before we both got hired here at UC, there we were um, at this Dave Vaughn workshop, um, not even knowing who each other is. And so now um, it's this very small world. So that's a fun little story here. So um, anyway, I'm finally out of my story here, okay? So in 2013, he's at the uh, American Psychological Association, which happened to be out in Honolulu. And of course, I get together with him there. And um, he, we sit down and he bought hot dogs for us and uh, we're about to sit down and enjoy them. And uh, someone, you know, randomly comes up with, always happens when we're at, he's at a conference. Um, people are constantly, you know, coming up to say hi, ask for an autograph, pose for a picture with him, and he, of course, graciously does so. So here he was just as we sat down, uh, uh, you know, somebody came up. So, um, we, okay, so we, we, you know, we dive into our hot dogs, and I'm listening to him and saying whatever brilliant things he's talking about, and I'm eating my hot dog, and I get down to my last bite, and I pop it in my mouth, and well, it turns out that should have been two bites. It was too big for one, and I guess what? It gets lodged in my throat. So for the first time since I was a little kid, I'm choking to death, all right? But I'm trying to be cool, all right? So I'm taking my nap and I'm, you know, trying to work this thing up or down, and it won't move. I can't get it to go either way, uh, but I'm trying to be cool. And he's talking, and he finally realizes that something's wrong and asks me, uh, you know, are you choking? And I have to acknowledge Yes, and he gets behind me. And he's hammered on my back, and uh, we, we managed to get the hot dog, you know, up and, and out. So, um, um, I, there's my story. He uh, he doesn't just talk the talk; he walks the walk. He talks about heroism, and I don't know if he's saved anybody else's life, but uh, I can attest to the fact that Zimbardo has saved mine. So that is my um, that's my Zimbardo story. So I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks. See you next time. Bye.